Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we'll look at U.S. transfer pricing rules, sale of tangible property, part two. In the first session, we looked at comparable and controlled price method and resale price method. In this method, we would look at the three other methods that we did not cover, which are the cost plus comparable profit and the profit split method. This topic is covered in international accounting as well as on the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. These are the courses that I cover, including CPA questions. On my website, I do have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice questions, 2,000 plus CPA questions, and many quasi-CPA simulations. The prerequisite for this uh, topic is in the description if you need so. And basically, what we're going to be looking for is the sale of tangible property the, based on the Treasury regulation that requires the use one of the five specified methods to determine an arm length price and a sale of tangible property. What, what is a tangible property? Either inventory or fixed asset between related parties. The five methods are comparable uncontrolled price method and resale method. Those two methods we already covered in the prior session. You could look in the description. In this session, we we'll look at the cost plus method, comparable profit methods, and the profit split method. Starting with the cost plus method. When, first of all, when do we use the cost plus method? When there is no comparable uncontrolled sales, basically put, we cannot find something comparable to what we are doing. And the related buyer does, does more than simply distribute the goods it purchases. So basically, it's not like the, the, uh, the resale price where we sell something and the person that the party that we sold it to simply resell it. Here we sell something to another party, then they use it in their manufacturing process. So the cost plus method adds an appropriate gross profit using a comparable uncontrolled transaction. And you're saying, you just said we can, we use it when there is no comparable uncontrolled sales. Well, we have to kind of find out what will be the closest thing to add the profit. And we'll look at an example to the cost of producing a product to establish an arm length transaction. So this method normally uses uh, in cases involving manufacturing. Why? Because you sell items that goes into a bigger product then that item they might go into you know, another product as well. So that's why it's in manufacturing assembly, same thing. You'll sell an item that goes into another item. Like you sell a radio, the radio goes into the car or you sell batteries, the batteries are assembled into the car or other production of goods that are sold to related party. So here, the physical similarity between the product transfer is not important in determining a comparability under this method as it is under the comparable uncontrolled price method. So it doesn't have to be the same item as long as it's comparable enough, we can live with it. Okay. So what factors will determine, uh, can, we, can we factor when we are looking at the cost plus method? Factors that could be considered relevant is the complexity of the manufacturing or assembly process. So we can look at similar manufacturing or assembly process. Um, manufacturing, production, and engineering process. How did they make the product engineering-wise? How did they buy it? How, how do they control inventory and how do they test it? So we could look at these factors to determine whether we have a comparability. And the best way to illustrate this is to just take a look at an example. Assume that P company, which is the parent company, has a subsidiary in Taiwan that acquires material to uh, locally to produce electronic component. So the Taiwanese subsidiary is producing the component. The component costs $4 per unit to produce in Taiwan, and it's sold only to P company. So notice there is no, they're not selling it to third party. There is no comparable uncontrolled price, okay? Because the Jap because the Taiwanese subsidiaries that does not sell the component to other unrelated, the comparable uncontrollable, uncontrollable me price method is not applicable here, okay? Parent company combines the electronic component important from Taiwan with other part to assemble electronic switches. So simply put, they will send us one item and this item goes into a bigger item. So we're not really reselling it. We're not really reselling it because we don't simply resell it. The resale price method is also out. Okay. So now what we have to do, P must look at a comparable transaction between unrelated parties in Taiwan to determine whether the cost plus method can be used. Now we have to look at if there's any similar companies to what we're doing that they sell their product in Taiwan. So let's assume um, comparable company in Taiwan manufactures similar electronic component 
from its inventory of material and sell them to unrelated party at an average gross profit markup of 25%. Well, good. Now we have something to work with. If it's $4, add 25% markup, we have $5 now. In this case, the application of the cost plus method re result in a transfer price of five of five dollars, which is four dollars times twenty-five cent, which is twenty-five percent, which is a dollar plus four equal to five dollars. So we just solved the problem. The second method we're going to be looking at is comparable profit method. Okay, the comparable profit me method is based on the assumption that similarly situated taxpayer will tend to earn similar return over a given period. So simply put, if you are in it, in it. If, you are, if, if two companies are in the same uh, tax, uh, in, in a similar tax situation, they should be making the same profit. Okay. So under this method, you just have to look at one or two parties in a related transaction is chosen for examination. So basically you have to see, okay, the, the treasury will have to see, okay, let me take a look at your situation because it's going to be similar to your subsidiary or similar to your sister company because you guys are situated in the, uh, uh, and the same tax or similar tax jurisdiction okay so how what we do in arm length price is determined by referring to an objective measure of problem of profitability earned by uncontrolled taxpayer on comparable uncontrolled sales so basically we look at something similar to yours okay so profit indicator that might be considered will be um will be the, ra the ratio of operating income to operating asset simply put taking operating income divided by operating asset to find a ratio ratio remember ratio is a percentage the ratio of gross profit to operating expenses we can take gross profit divided by operating expenses or the ratio of operating profit to sales or we can take operating profit divided by sales to find a percentage and see if that percentage of comparable profit is acceptable okay if the transfer price results in ratios for the party being examined that are in line with those ratios for similar businesses then the transfer price will not be challenged so simply put they would look at your business and they would look at your profit based on a certain ratio one of these ratios and if those ratios are comparable to other businesses then then your transfer price is acceptable or fair okay so let's take a look at an example g is a u.s manufacturers distribute its product in a foreign country through its foreign sales subsidiary uh, i'm sorry v vid vidco Assume that the that the uh, that the subsidiary has a sales of a million dollar and operating expenses of two hundred thousand. So let's start. Let's let's build an income quasi income statement here. So we have sales of a million and operating expenses of two hundred thousand. Okay. Let's see what else do we have over the past several years. Comparable distributor to the to the foreign subsidiaries have earned operating profit equal to five percent. So simply put, what we're saying the profit of similar companies should be five percent of sales. The profit is fifty thousand. So we have sales of a million, operating expenses of two hundred thousand. Well, guess what? What's left is cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold under those circumstances must be seven hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. So under this comparable method, a transfer price. The transfer uh, transfer price that provide vid vid company and earning um, an operating an operating profit equal to five percent of sales will be considered an arm land. And where do you find out that cost of sales should be seven hundred and fifty based on these ratios? Well, so a million will give you fifty fifty thousand of profit to achieve this profit. So one million minus two hundred thousand minus the profit of fifty cost of goods sold must be seven fifty. So if we transfer to them. 750 um, if we use 750 as the uh, transfer price then it's acceptable this is the amount that glasgow would be allowed to charge as a transfer price for its sales 750,000. so this what this example demonstrates is the ratio of operating profit to sales so we looked at the profit which was 50,000, and we looked at sales which was a million this is the five percent profit so this is what we used we used the operating profit to sales Okay. The Treasury regulation also specifically mentioned the use of the ratio of operating profit to asset. So you could use some sort of operating profit to, to operating asset. Look at similar companies and the ratio of gross profit to operating expenses. You could also take the gross profit divided by operating expenses to see if that's an acceptable uh, indicator in applying this method.
Okay. The profit split. Uh, the profit split method is the last method. Here we assume that the buyer and the seller are one economic uh, entity, one economic unit. The total profit earned by the economic unit from the sales to uncontrolled parties is allocated to members of the economic unit based on the relative contribution into the profit. So after we after we computed our total profit for the company sales, let's just let's make it sales minus cost of goods cost of goods sold cost of goods sold equal to profit this is the profit for sorry my pen is acting up let me just do this one more time so if we have profit let's start from the beginning sales minus cost of goods sold equal to the profit and for the sake of simple for the sake of simplicity what's going to happen is um, we're going to be using the relative value of each party's contribution. Let's assume we contributed 50, 50, 50 to this profit, 50, 50 to this profit. So what's going to happen is this. The profit will have to be split 50, 50. And how do we split the profit 50, 50? We, we basically adjust the cost, the transfer price between the two parties, where the profit is split 50, 50, 50 between those two parties. Now, if one party contributed more and their profit should be 80, and my profit should be 20, the other party should be because it should be 20%, then guess what? Then the 80% will have a higher, they would receive a higher, I'm sorry, they would uh, receive a higher transfer price. Okay, so the relative value of each party's contribution and earning is based on the functions performed, the risks assumed, and the resource employed in the business activity that generate the profit. What I meant to say, if they contributed more, they should absorb more profit. That's what I that's what I was trying to say. If they if they contributed more, if they're assuming more risk, then they're taking they, then they should take more profit. Actually, cost will be lower, not higher. The transfer price will be lower. I misspoke. If you have any questions about this topic, please let me know. Uh, as always, I would like to remind you. And by by the way, before I proceed, there are two versions of this method. I'm not going to cover them. Um, just it's too much details. Uh, I'm sure if, you, if that's what you do for a living, you know it, or if it's in your textbook, you would know it as well. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me and please visit my website for additional lectures. Um, I strongly suggest if you're studying for your CPA exam to subscribe. It's an investment in your career. Good luck and study hard.